down here in the creek. Nice breeze and no strawberry slides. We're in between feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. share a couple thoughts uh, this afternoon before we conclude the service but uh, passage it's always a great encouragement times like this is first Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 the apostle Paul says but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the comfort we can take from the Word of God. We're thankful that it addresses every situation and circumstance of our lives, and thankful that even in times such as this, we can look to your Word for comfort, hope, and encouragement. We pray that you would be honored and always say and do this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at this passage this afternoon, I'm reminded what Paul says in the last part of verse 13, that you sorrow not even as others have no hope. There's been no question over the last week. There's been many tears shed. No doubt there will be tears shed in the days ahead as well. But we're thankful that even though we sorrow, that we don't have a hopeless sorrow and uh, we've already expressed that appreciate Pastor Weigel's focus uh, this afternoon or this morning on the hope that we do have but there's a joy there as well no more pain no more suffering times when I would go to see Lucille over at Genesis and she'd be in a, and be in a lot of pain and uh, pain to the point of tears and yet no more of that no more pain no more suffering no more sorrow no more crying and we can take comfort in those words but I'm thankful as well that Paul goes on to say by the word of the Lord we realize and give you thanks that God's word never changes we look at the situation and circumstance in which we find ourselves and things change from day to day and we never know just exactly what's going to be protocol or what's going to happen and yet we can be thankful that God's word never changes we can find comfort and hope in those words and we can be sure of that but I'm thankful as well, Paul says in verse 16, there's a personal comfort for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. As, I, as I've been thinking about that over the last couple of days, uh, my heart and my, uh, my, my heart longs for the day when the trumpet will sound and uh, we'll be caught up together to be with him. Lucille will have a head start on us, right? Yeah. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. But yet, I'm thankful, as I think about what Paul says, the Lord himself, the, the creator of the universe, the one who was crucified and, and died and, and was buried and rose again for me, he will come back for Lucille. He will come back for us. What great joy there is in that. But I'm thankful as well. Verse 17 says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord as an eternal aspect. You know, we, we get caught up in the here and now, don't we? We think about everything going on around us. But I've shared with our folks in, in, in the crick in the church here that, you know what, I'm thankful this life is not all there is. I'm thankful as we thought about and think about Lucille as she took her last breath on earth on Monday and took her first breath in heaven. You know, there's, there's an eternal aspect to that. What a, what a joy there is. But as we've been reminded today already as well, 
there's a conditional comfort because Paul says in verse 14, for if we believe, there's a personal relationship there that's so vital and so important for us. And, and uh, one of the joys of, of, of knowing Lucille was the fact that she was confident in an eternal destiny. You know, I've, I've heard of people, I've talked to people say, you know what, do you know what's going to happen after this life? Do you know where you're going? People say, well, I think so, or I hope so. But Paul says, no, we, we don't have to think so. We can have a, a sure comfort and a sure hope because of the word, because of his words here to this, this, this church that was, was struggling. But there's, so there's a condition for that as well. But I'm thankful that one day we'll see Lucille again and, and we can rejoice. In, in the fact that there will be a joyful reunion. Let's pray this afternoon. Father, again, we're so thankful for your love for us. We're so thankful for the confidence that we can have in your word. We're thankful for the hope that we can find. Uh, Father, I know in my time in this earth, I've never lived in a time that's in more need of hope, but we can find hope in our relationship with you. We can find joy because of our relationship with you that supersedes the circumstances and situations of this life, no matter how difficult or how hard they may be. And we're thankful for a life that was lived for you, first of all, for the life that was lived for others, for her family. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege we've had of knowing her. We ask now that you would, as we lay her body to rest, that you would keep her until the trumpet sounds. Father, we're thankful for the anticipation we can have of that day, even for those who are alive and remain. May you help us to focus on that blessed hope of the glory of the Spirit, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we're thankful for the comfort and grace you give in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. And folks, I would remind you of the get-together immediately following at Will and Peggy's house at 2550 Cedar Street in Millville. And at this time, we'd like to offer you, I'm going to place the flowers here at the casket if you'll take one instead of us passing them to you because of the obvious health concerns and thank you for your cooperation. But that would be one final tribute to Lucille to place the flower upon her casket.